What's up, guys? This is Tom Taylor. I'm uh, joined today by a guy I think we can uh, all agree is one championship royalty. You can see the belt there behind him, Angla. Angla, it's it's been a few months at least, I think, since I've spoken to you. Uh, how's everything going? How's life? Good, good. Everything is good. Uh, training camp's going well. Just excited to get back and showcase that what I've been working on in the last, you know, in the last half year. Well, you're right in the thick of training camp now. The fight's only a couple of weeks away at this point. Uh, um, you know, you, you've known about it for much longer than 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 we have. Um, but but how is the training going? You must be pretty excited for this one. Good, yeah. The training's very well. Uh, we've done everything we need to. Um, now just doing the final touches, and you guys are going to see a new version of me and an exciting fight between Okami and I. Mm -hmm. this is a fight you were asking for uh, for quite a while you two kind of went back and forth you were talking about this fight kind of crowning the best uh, Asian middleweight which I think was very cool um, you know this you, you could have gotten a lot of different fights but one gave you the one that you wanted I mean how satisfying is that yeah I mean he wanted it too you know he, he he's the one that called me out first and I'm like yeah uh, it's it's a it's a fight that I would love to have um, he's uh, he's someone that I've been you know I've looked up to and been watching since you know the, the other promotions um so for me to compete against him it's it's very it, it feels great it's very satisfying mm -hmm. um it's a great matchup for sure now when we first heard about this one it sounded like it was going to happen in tokyo and uh, and obviously that's not the case we know it's happening in singapore now um now do you know anything about why it didn't happen in tokyo is there anything you can share or is it sort of a mystery to you as well i'm not sure i'm not sure it's a mystery to me as well uh mm -hmm. The, the initial bout agreement was for Japan, you know, for, for, for the, for the stadium there, but they, a month in, they switched it up. So. Mm -hmm. Is that disappointing at all for you? I know you got a lot of love for Singapore. You fought there many times, but I've seen you fight in Japan twice and it's, I mean, it's a vibe. It's very exciting when you fight in Japan. Were you disappointed I was at all? Japan. I was looking forward to Japan, but you know, it's going to be very cold in Japan. So I, I'm okay with that. I'm a, I'm a warm blooded person. So. Um, in that, in that instance, I, I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. Uh, I can't blame you. I'm up in Canada, as you know, so uh, it's starting to get pretty cold up here. Uh, Florida and, and, and Singapore places like that are starting to look pretty good. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Okami a bit, obviously a real veteran of the game, lots of tape to study on this guy. Uh, what, what are his best skills? What do you have to worry about in this one? Well, uh, his, his grappling, you know, his judo, his body locks, um, he's long he's tall and and uh stylistically that's uh it's a it's it's not a good matchup for me you know stylistically because the long rangey grapplers are the kind of fighters that i have a harder time with he's not gonna stand and bang with me that's for sure you know but uh mm -hmm. i mean we, we've we've game planned for him i mean i've i've worked with a lot of teammates on him so it should be good mm -hmm. Um, you have said this, you know, many times in the lead up to this fight, that this is kind of a bad matchup for you on paper. He's got the sort of body type, the style that's given you problems in the past. Um, so, you know, two part question, why do you seek out a fight like this that, you know, is going to be so difficult and, and what do you do to make sure that you win it, given that you've had trouble with this kind of style before? Well, I need to get better. You know, I need to, I need to be, uh, more well-rounded and I need to be better in all aspects of mixed martial arts. You know, that's the reason why I still compete. You know, it's because I want to keep growing and I want to keep evolving as a mixed martial artist. And, you know, before I came to Henry Hoof, it was, I was more of a grappler too. So, like, I know I've neglected that part of my game. And I, I know with a good camp, like, that that part can be sharpened as well. And so for me, it's like the evolution of mixed martial arts, evolution of me growing as a as a fighter you know that, that's what excites me that's what gets me up at night i mean in the morning to train so mm -hmm. i'm excited for this i'm very excited for it too uh when you when you go into the gym and you're training for a guy like okami i mean like who who have you been working with i saw you were getting some rounds in with mickey gall you know the usual suspects i saw Dalcha, uh fosdick anyone in particular you're working with this yeah uh rogan uh gracie rogan mm -hmm. gracie is uh, one of them um and and eric you know, Ella Quinn as well. Uh, more of the jujitsu heavy guys, you know, Herbert Burns. You know, these are the guys that I work with. Um, you know, a, a lot of the grapplers, a lot, a lot mm -hmm. more grappling for this camp. 
But at the same time, my striking is going to be sharp too. Mm -hmm. It must give you just so much confidence, you know, training at a facility like the one that you do. Just that's just so full of of top level guys, I guess, right? Yeah, of course. But but at the end of the day, it's it's really up to you. It's really mm -hmm. up to the person that's going in the cage. You know, you could have the best whatever, but you're the one that's going in there. So I have to be. Everything is accounted in in my hands. You know. It doesn't matter if you're in the best gym or in the worst gym. Uh, you're the captain of your own destiny. So when I get in the cage, it's all on me. So I want to make sure all the stones are, you know, I mean, I, I, I've done everything that I need to do. And I'm the best version of myself on the night of the fight. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you mentioned the pressure's all on you. Of course, we, we all know that in the MMA, there are coaches, training partners, and so on that are all very important. But at the end of the day, it is just you in there. And then there's a lot of pressure that comes with that. How, how do you deal with the pressure of, the, of, you know, just being alone in there when it happens? Uh, the training is what gives me that, you know, my, my, my training and, and the work that I put in is what makes the pressure and not so much of the pressure. Um, if I can honestly look at myself and tell me that, you know, tell myself that, I, I did everything I'm supposed to, then there's no pressure. You know, what, what more can you do in life than the best that you, you can give, you know? Um, besides that, I don't really have pressure. You know, I don't really care. I don't really, there's no no pressure in my mind. I'm just trying to be the best version of myself, you know, so. You know, we've, we've covered that that Okami is sort of a tough fight for you. And he, he bears a lot of similarities to, to De Ritter, I'd say, just in that they're, you know, both big grapplers. Um, over the course of your last few fights, I would say, how do I say this? I mean, I, I would say that people kind of perceive the grappling side of the game as maybe an area where you're weak. But as you said before, this is, you know, kind of your what you come from. You were a grappler first. Yeah. By beating a guy like Okami, you know, and stopping some takedowns, do you feel like that sort of silences the doubters a little bit? Yeah, for sure. It does a little bit, you know. And and, I, and I'm still growing and I'm still learning and I'm still working on, on my craft, you know, to, to be better. Um, and And I do believe that, you know, I still have a run in me, so I'm gonna keep improving and keep getting better. Go back to my my grappling and keep working on it. You know, I have really I have really high level grapplers, you know, at my disposal that I can work with. Um, so it's it's not a it's not a matter of um, can I do it. It's a matter of uh, when. You know, mm -hmm. it's gonna take some time. I'm probably gonna have to you know beat a few more guys. Um, so it is what it is, and and I'm you know willing to climb back uh, to the top. Mm -hmm. uh, you you know you mentioned that you have another run in you. I definitely agree with that. Um, just day to day, how much of a focus is the title? I mean, you've got the belt there behind you, as I said. Do do you think about the title a lot, or is it more just about the next fight? I've got like six of them in behind me. <laughs> you don't I, have to brag on lock. Come on. No, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. It's it's uh, of course as, as a. As a mixed martial artist, as a fighter, you know, in an organization, that's that's a goal, you know, to get the championship. Um, but you know, we'll see, we'll see in, in the next couple of fights. My my focus is on Okami, and that's the only thing that I'm focused on right now. Every day I wake up thinking of Okami, so nothing else past that point matters right now. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if my interview is going to be boring because everything is towards Okami right now. No, that's totally fair, man. Interviews with you are never boring. It's always, it's always a total pleasure to chat with you, man. Yeah. Um, well, let's shift gears a little bit. I wanted to ask you, um, De Ritter, I'm sure you saw recently, was booked to defend his title against a, a new guy in one championship, somebody who had never fought in the organization before. And that fight has since fallen through, but there was sort of a little bit of uh, backlash to that decision from one, to give a title shot to a guy who'd never fought um, in one before. What did you think about that? Is, that? is that fair? Was that maybe not fair? It's fine. I don't care. That's it. Yeah, I, I don't care. It doesn't matter. I don't. Mm -hmm. care. Um, I mean, ideally, you would want to, you want them to prove, you know, prove it in the organization. But um, it's fine with me. There's so many. There's so there are so many, you know, great fighters in the world that are relatively unknown, you know, and and you know, I just got to focus on uh, getting better and putting on better shows for the fans. Um, speaking of, of newcomers in one championship, I also wanted to ask you about Roberto Soldich, who everyone's very excited about. Um, he's a, a former two division champion in another organization. You of course know a thing or two about being a two division champion. Uh, what do you think of him and, and how do you think he'll do in one championship? I think he'll do good. I've trained with him, 
You know, he's come mm-hmm. to uh, when it was Sanford, he's come and trained with us before. He's got a lot of power in the left hand, you know. Um, very dynamic striker, good footwork, good fundamentals. Uh, he's got a tough fight too, you know. He's got a tough fight, a heavy grappler. Uh, and and a big and a big guy too, you know, for that weight class. So so we'll see. It, it's his first fight is a big test. It, it, if he passes, you know, it, it, that big test, I think I think the winner of that one will probably get a title shot, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say, are you surprised at all that they didn't just give him a title shot right away? You know, I know I just kind of questioned giving title shots to debuting fighters, but he's a former two division champion from a big promotion. Yeah. Sort of seemed like that might make sense. Are you surprised by that? Yeah. One one have their own agenda, you know. So it's fair enough. Cool with me, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I usually just assume they know what they're doing when they when they <laughs> when they do these things. They have a plan. Um, another guy I wanted to ask you about is is Martin, who's uh, on a little bit of a a skid right now. Sort of hasn't been getting the results that that he wants of late. Um, I would say he's still got the skill and the, and the ability to, to to be a top fighter. But you know, just you know, being that he's on this a bit of a rough patch right now. What do you think the future holds for him? What advice do you offer him as, as he finds himself in this situation? He, he needs to come back here and train, you know, come live here in my house and train. Uh, just clamp down a little bit and train, you know. Um, mm. it's, it's part of the game, you know. These young guys are hungry. These young guys are they're so, like, they start at, at such a younger age that, we're almost playing the catch up game on our end. So not saying that we can't do it. It's just that we got to put everything into it. So it would be good for him to come back and train and just, you know, away from the family a little bit as much as, you know, I don't like him being away from the family and he doesn't like being away from the family. He needs to make that sacrifice. Um, But a fight is a fight, you know, anything can happen. Uh, You could be the most prepared and then the night of the fight, it doesn't go your way, you know, but to minimize that, we have to train good and we have to put everything uh, into, into the, into the fight preparation. So mm-hmm. have you spoken to, to Martin at all since that last yeah. fight? Obviously it was a tough one. Yeah. You no, know, I talked to him this morning. You know, we talk very regularly. Uh, good, good. You know, a little brother to me, uh, we're good friends. So we stay in touch this morning. We talked and he's going to probably come back in a few weeks you know, and, and get back in camp. Great, great. Uh, speaking of little brothers, your boy Teal is fighting again soon too. He's fighting in, in Manila against uh, Jeremy Pacquiao. I think I'm saying his name right. Uh, thoughts Jeremy, on that matchup? That's a tough fight. That's a tough fight, mm-hmm. you know? But if you look at Teal, he, he had uh, uh, three relatively, you know, good fights. When, when I say good fights, he's matched up against guys with more fights than him, you know? And then his fourth fight, he goes against like a former Road FC champion over 20 fights, you know. In my opinion, he won that fight, but it's controversial, right? Mm-hmm. And then he, he, he it's the, the next fight with Sonoda, who also has like about 20 fights. Mm-hmm. When he only has four fights, you know, it's, it's, it's a, and it, it went to a no contest because of the low blow, right? So mm-hmm. he's been in a, in a, I don't know. I, I just need to be there in this corner for the next fight. And he, he'll do all right. He'll do good. Um, but Jeremy is a, is a tough, tough opponent. You know, a tough opponent. And I, I believe he was ranked top five, right, at one point. I'm not... I think he was at one point, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so now we're, we're in the game now, you know, after we beat this guy. Um, if, he, if he's able to pull this off, uh, we're in the mix now. So... Um, he, he hasn't had, you know, the last three fights, he hasn't had easy fights at all. So, mm-hmm. Cool, man. Well, it's a great matchup on a great card. Uh, let me just wrap it up with a couple more questions here. First and foremost, the question I've been dying to ask you since this interview started, the hard-hitting stuff you come here for, where's the mustache? Where's the beard? What happened? The mustache, I don't need it anymore. <laughs> yeah, you've outgrown it? <laughs> yeah. My wife, my, wife was, my wife was bugging me about the beard. So the beard That's... and the mustache, so I was like, oh, okay. It's funny, man. I would say that like 80 or 90% of the time that a beard disappears and then I ask why, it's almost always the wife or the partner uh, <laughs> that's behind it. And now I look 10 years younger. Yeah, you look great, man. It's it's an awesome look. Uh, another uh, hard-hitting question for you here. Um, I, I'm not sure if you're aware of the uh, uh, the strawweight fighter in one championship, Daniel Williams. He's a MMA fighter and uh, also Muay Thai. Um, he's a beekeeper. 
I was wondering if you got any beekeeping tips for him. Any beekeeping? Yeah, yeah, because as a former pro yeah. yourself. Uh, the pain is worth it, you know. The honey is sweet, so the pain is worth it. <laughs> uh, uh, honey bees are pretty cool, man. It doesn't, it doesn't require much upkeep, you know. It doesn't require much upkeep, and you get amazing product out of it, you know. Um, but yeah, of course, it's, it's a little dangerous, so you gotta make sure you're well equipped to do the job. But, but it doesn't take much upkeep, and it's fun, you know. It's a, it's a cool little thing. Uh, unfortunately, right now I don't have a, you know, I don't have a house big enough or a yard big enough uh, to keep bees. But one day, <laughs> let's let's uh, conclude here. Um, big fight coming up. Message for your fans, not just in Myanmar, but but all over the world. Um, tune in. Uh, it's going to be a fun fight for the fans. Uh, we're going to find out who the best middleweight, Asian middleweight is. Uh, so I've, I've prepared really well for it. And and also one, one, one major thing, right? One major thing. Uh, please, you know, send out a prayer for, if, if you're a believer, send out a prayer for Myanmar. Uh, the people there are struggling. Uh, just recently, a lot of, you know, pe like uh, people in Myanmar, uh, people in my state were bombed. You know, so please uh, pray for them. And, you know, thank you for all the love and support. Uh, we're going to put on a great show November 19th.